records fall, running like a rabbit. Who's the human cannonball? It's William Lightfoot Babbitt. Oh, here's to Billy Babbitt, bring it down, bring it down. Here's to Billy Babbitt, bring it down, bring it down. Here's to Billy Babbitt, who was faster than a rabbit. Here's a toast to Billy Babbitt, bring it down, down, down. Oh, who's this dazzling debonair, tall and dark and handsome? Who's the answer to a maiden's prayer? It's Tommy, pretty boy, Ransom. <laughs> so, here's to Tommy Ransom, bring it down, bring it down. Here's to Tommy Ransom, bring it down, bring it down. Here's to Tommy Ransom, who was tall and dark and handsome. Here's a toast to Tommy Ransom, bring it down, down, down. No, who's the man Phi Beta Kappa Key, the pride of old Dean Thompson, the man most likely to succeed? It's Gilbert, brainy boy, Thompson. So, here's to Gilly Thompson. Bring it down, bring it down. Here's his cap, but no Gilly. Has anybody seen him? I don't think he came. Come on, Gilly, get up here. Where is he? He isn't here. Just a minute. Quiet, please. Well, boys, I'm sorry to say that the man who graduated with the highest academic honors of our entire class is not with us tonight. But wherever he is and whatever he's doing, I'm sure he's enjoying the success and happiness he so richly deserves. Gilbert Thompson. Should old acquaintance be forgotten? Excuse me, has that job been filled? No, but you're a little early. The boss don't generally get here till about uh, 9.20. Well, you know the old proverb, first come, first serve. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> What's a proverb? A proverb is an adage. Oh. Well, what's an adage? Huh? An adage is a saying in general use. Oh. <laughs> If I was as smart as you, I'd be teaching or something. Honey, I used to be a teacher. You were? Well, how come you're not teaching now? Well, there are more teachers than jobs these days. <laughs> That's right. Well, I hope your luck will change. Thanks. I'll be back here before 9.20. All right. a match? You haven't? Well, that's all right. I haven't any cigarettes. Gave up smoking yesterday. Been smoking for years. Not much. About a pack a day. Used to smoke two packs, but cut it down to a half a pack. Took a lot of willpower to cut down, though. Funny thing, willpower. 
You never know you have it till you try to use it. And then you find you have more than you need. And once you know you have it, then you can really begin to enjoy life. Wait a minute. Oh, I know, but a cup of hot coffee won't hurt. I know that jobs are scarce these days, but if I were young like you, nothing could discourage me. I'd always remember that no matter how bad today is, there's always a tomorrow. And tomorrow would bring me something good. But I've waited for tomorrow. A hundred tomorrows. But you have so much to look forward to. You're pretty and fine. And who knows? Someday a young man will come along who'll want to devote his whole life just to making you happy. And you'll marry him. And have a little house, bright and shining. And one day maybe, maybe there'll be a baby. A baby? Why not? Say, I'll bet it'll be a little boy with big, lovely eyes just like yours. And when he grows up, he'll be so proud of you. Oh, it must be wonderful to have children to love and protect and care for them. Oh, I know a person has to have more than love to care for them. Money, a job. But somehow those things always seem to work out. Maybe you're right. I know I'm right. Say, it's 9.15. I'm afraid I've got to be running along. Would you care to have another cup of coffee? No, thank you. Are you sure? Yes, really, thank you. Okay, I'll... I'll pay the check. Excuse me. Could you use a waitress instead? Why? I thought if you could, there's a young girl over there. She's pretty. And a good worker. I wish you'd give her a trial. I know she'd make good. Any experience? Oh, yes. She's been waiting a long time. Okay. Give her this apron and tell her she's hired. Thanks. I will. Just a minute. Would you mind taking off your coat? My coat? Yes. What for? I want you to try something on. Just try it on for me, will you? Well, what's this? Nothing. Just a little surprise. That's all. Right. Now, take this check and the money. Go over to the counter and pay it, huh? Well, I don't understand. You don't have to understand. Just go over and pay it. Wait a minute. That's ten cents too much. Say, I bet it's a tip. That's the first time it's happened this joint in five years. Maybe it'll bring you luck in your new job. A job? Yes. Now you won't have to go back to the dock again until you get a yacht. Goodbye. Okay, the job's yours. Thanks, boss. Job. Cap, I've got a job. 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 How about that job? Too late, buddy. The job's filled. Things sure look bad. Oh, I don't know. I worked two days last month. Gosh, I wish I had a steady job like that. Well. Oh, hello there. Say, that's a cute baby. Yeah. Say. You forgot your baby. That's not my baby. Excuse me, is, is this your baby? No. I beg pardon, madam. No, I don't want any. No, I, I mean, is, is this your baby? No. Yeah, Excuse me, baby. is this your child? Is this your child, madam? A uh, uh, grandchild, madam? Well, this is a fine state of affairs. Hmm. You know, you're a nice little baby, and I'm pleased to have met you. But you're lost, and we've got to do something about it. People are certainly careless these days. Now, what am I going to do with you? <laughs> so you think it's funny, eh? You would, you little rascal. <laughs> oh, ouch. Please give my baby boy a good home. That's funny. I 
I wish I had a good home to take you to. I wish I had a good home to take me to. But all I have is a room in a boarding house, and I'm not so sure I still have that. Uh-oh. Now it's starting to rain. That's all we need. Are you catching cold? That settles it. You want to spend the night with me? Yeah, I only live a few minutes with you. Time to wet out, ain't it, Bill? Yeah. <laughs> Lost something, ma'am? Yes. My baby. Where's my baby? What baby? I left him right there on the bench in a basket. Oh, oh, in the basket? Yes. Well, uh, a fella just left here with it. Where'd he go? Where'd you take my baby? Well, I don't know, lady. Maybe he took it to the police station. Police station? Yes. Yes, yes, of course. Parts. They'll come in handy. Now, where do we begin? Bye. Yes, where do we begin? You know, I've had no experience with baby boys. Do you go to sleep undressed, or do you go to sleep dressed, or what do you do? <laughs> well, I know one thing. You certainly don't go to bed with your shoes on. Well, take those off. Huh? Here we are. My, but your feet are cold. Oh, will you stop your laughing? I'm not tickling you. Gosh, but you're cute. I don't see how anyone could leave you. If you ask me, I, I think your parents are just a couple of S-K-U-N-K-S. But don't let it worry you. You know what they say, a bad beginning makes a good ending. Well, of course you're supposed to get undressed. Look, look, here's your little nightshirt. Come on, darling. Come on, sweetheart. Now we just, yeah, we just get you ready. Oh no, no, you got to say, listen, you got to go to bed now. Did I do all right by you? There you are. You're all fixed up, huh? Golly, you are cute. If I were married, you'd be just the kind of a boy I'd want. If I had a job. What's the matter? Am I boring you? Oh, you're sleepy. All right, we'll put you to bed, huh? Oh, but first we've got to get the bed made. Well, oh, here, there. There we are. There we go. Ah, yeah, here you are. <laughs> oh, oh, wait a minute. That will never do. Here. This will be your high chair. It's a little low for a high chair, but I imagine it must be nice and soft, huh? Oh, sleepy, huh? I'll get you something to play with. Oh, here. Now, don't shave. Remember, you're, you're a little too young for that. Just in case, in case you want to read at night, huh? <laughs> Little curly hair in a high chair The day begins and ends with you The world of today and all that it may hold Was made for you, my sweet The world of tomorrow and all it may unfold Is at your tiny feet you're like the spring when winter days have flown. You're like a king upon a tiny throne. Little 
little curly hair in a high chair. What's your orders for today? Little curly hair in a high chair. I'll do anything you say. When you're near, the room seems to brighten. The sun comes streaming through your eyes. You're the reason why they keep writing all those tender lullabies. Mm -hmm. There you go, banging with your blocks, pulling off your socks. Mm -hmm. There you go, trying to make your toes touch your tiny nose. Heaven's close to your chair and my chair. When you smile the way you do. Little curly hair in a high chair. My day begins and ends with you. Heaven's close to your chair and my chair When you smile the way you do Little curly hair in a high chair My day begins and ends with Is that nice? <laughs> What's the matter, chum? Aren't you sleepy? I am. Yeah. Oh, you're hungry. All right, I'll get you a hamburger. Yeah. But no onions. <laughs> what am I talking about, hamburger? <laughs> Milk. That's what you need. Yeah. Milk. Golly, I forgot. I'm broke. I know. I'll get some from the landlady. Mrs. Mason, I was just wondering... And I was just wondering when you're going to pay your back rent. Oh, in just a few days now, really. Look, would you be good enough to let me have a little milk for a baby? What baby? I don't know. Why, my aunts. I promised to take care of it just for tonight. I haven't got any milk. Oh. Well, then, would you take care of the baby till I get back? He's in my room. How long will you be gone? Just long enough to get a bottle of milk. Order in the court, please. Next case. Gilbert Thompson. Gilbert Thompson. Yes, sir. Well, come on. Charged with stealing a bottle of milk. Court recess for five minutes. I'll see the prisoner in my chambers. Well, let's wait. Gil, what's this all about? Well, to tell you the truth, I was out last night with a few of the fellas. We were talking over a deal. And you know how these millionaires are, always clowning? <laughs> and one of them dared me to do it. I guess I had one drink too many. You know, this is really awfully embarrassing. I'd be more than happy to pay for the milk. Sit down. The last time I heard about you, you were teaching in some out-of-town college. What happened? Oh, that. It was privately endowed, and they ran into some hard luck. But I didn't mind. I've got several excellent propositions lined up. Oh, that's what you were discussing last night. Oh, yes, yes, that was it. <laughs> yes. Yes, I see. Oh, I almost forgot. I have to speak to the bailiff. Excuse me a minute. I'll be right back. Harry, get me Madame Granville's school for girls. I think it's Parkville 457. Parkville 457, please.
I was just wondering how many of the fellows are doing what they thought they'd be doing when that picture was taken. <laughs> not very many, I imagine. I guess not. It's too bad you weren't at the banquet last night. We missed you. Yes, I'd like to have been there. You know, Gil, I'm a little disappointed that you've given up teaching. Why? Well, just the other day I was talking about you in connection with a private girls' school upstate. There's a professorship open. Is it still open? Yes, it is. Of course, I don't want to interfere with any of your plans. But it's a fine school, Gil. I'm sure you'd be very happy there. Sounds very interesting. I guess I'm still a teacher at heart. Well, then it's all settled. The job is yours. Judge? That's about the nicest sentence you've ever given anyone. Here's the address. I'll call Madame Granville and tell her to expect you this afternoon. Thank you, Judge. Not Judge. Joe Gill. Joe. By the way, I just happen to think it might not be a bad idea to give you an advance in salary. Oh, but, but I don't but I, I don't need it. I know you don't, but it'll bind our bargain. If you're obligated, you're bound to show up. Oh, don't worry. I'll show up all right. Well, goodbye and good luck. Professor. Goodbye, Joe, and thanks again. Now, if you just give me a description of the baby. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's, it's a little boy. Eight months old. And he has brown eyes. Brown hair. Just like Silky's hair is. And he was such a good baby. Always laughing. You know? Chum! Where'd you go for that milk? South America? I'm awfully sorry I was attained. Here's the rent I owe you, Mrs. Mason. Yes, and here's a dollar for your trouble. Wasn't no trouble, and if it was, it would cost you more than a dollar. <laughs> Chum, you have no idea what's happened. I've got a job. The kind of a job I've always wanted. In an exclusive school, too. <laughs> Don't I look like a professor? See, I've even got a shave and a haircut. Smell. Oh, but that isn't all. You haven't seen anything yet. Wait till you see what I brought home for a certain party. Will you be surprised? Look, from me to you. Isn't it nice? I thought of you the moment I saw it. Yesterday, yesterday I couldn't have afforded it. But it only goes to show that today is better than yesterday and tomorrow is even better still. You see how foolish it is to worry? Why, if you wait long enough, something good is bound to turn up. Ah, oh, isn't it wonderful? Now we have a future. Why, we can even make plans. Chum, you remember the little talk we had last night? When I said you'd be just the kind of a baby I'd want if I had a job? Well, I've got that job. And I was just wondering how you'd how you'd like me for a father. <laughs> you want to think it over? Well, that's all right. Just take your time. I don't want to rush you into anything. Of course, if you come to a decision, I hope you'll stick to it. <laughs> you would? <laughs> oh, chum. That's just what I was hoping you'd say. Mm -hmm. Bless your heart. Here, be a good little baby, and I'll go and do our packing, shall I? Chum, we're certainly getting out in a hurry. And we paid our rent, too. Mm -hmm, there you go, banging with your blocks, pulling off your socks. 
trying to make your toes touch your tiny nose. Heaven's close to your chair and my chair. When you smile the way you do, little curly hair in a high chair. My day begins and ends with you. What are we running for? Professor Lang, we're going to say goodbye to him. Where is he? Just outside the wall. I'm going to miss you, too, you all, all of you. Right. Oh, yes, all right. Bye. 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 I'm going to miss you, too. Bye. Yes, indeed. Bye. Well, I'm afraid not. You know how things are. Professor Lang. Indeed. This was supposed to be your athletic period. Line up. Line up immediately. Hurry up, girls. Hurry. And stay in line. Quiet, please. Now, stay in line. No stragglers. It's going to be awfully lonesome around here without Professor Lang. It's your own fault. Every one of you. Madame Granville was forced to let him go, and due entirely to your actions. And I might add, they were disgraceful. Stop that clucking. You know it's true. <sighs> the way you flirted with Professor Lang, you'd think there wasn't anything more important in life than a man. Well, is there? I said, is there? Shh! I'm just trying to think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just trying to think of the new professor's name. Oh, yes, Thompson, Gilbert Thompson. Oh, we'll take care of that. We'll call him Gilly for short. You'll do nothing of the kind. And you will also please remember that a professor is not a man. He is an intelligence and merely assumes human form as an aid to teaching. I think I flunked that exam. Oh, don't worry Excuse about Excuse me. Uh, I'm looking for Madame Grandel. Her office is right over there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, I'm Madame Grandel. You're Professor Thompson, aren't you? How do you do? Sit down. Before we begin, are there any questions you wish to ask? Why, uh, no. Very good. Now, have you any bad habits? No, ma'am. Are you sure? Well, none to speak of. Very good. You see, Professor, our personnel is hand-picked. Our teachers must be dignified, stern, yet kindly, cheerful, huh. and uh, neat in appearance. To sum it up, Professor, I'm not interested in teachers in the strict sense of the word, but rather character molders. Thus, when our girls grow up, they will be perfect examples of courtesy. Sit down. Thoughtfulness, truthfulness, justice, integrity, and honor. Well, that's nice. Any questions? Why, uh, uh, no. Are you sure? Well, I was wondering what I am supposed to teach. Oh, you're to teach philosophy, history, science, and uh, gymnastics. Is that all? In gymnastics, you will instruct the girls in the control and development of the body beautiful. Theoretically, of course. Oh, uh, of course. Very good. I'll show you to your quarters. The room's are right above my office. If at any time you wish to consult me, don't hesitate to do so. Living room, study, bedroom, and bath beyond. 
Is it necessary for me to stay here? I mean, every night? All members of the faculty live on the grounds. Oh. Uh, Madam Granville, are children allowed? Not under 14. Why? I was just thinking of a little boy. A boy? Here? Absurd. I do not permit my teachers to have families. You are a bachelor, aren't you? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Yes, very good. I'll see you later, Professor. Thompson, I just found out that all the teachers have to live here in school. Oh, that's a too bad. Do you want me to take a chump to the school? No, 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 don't do that. They don't allow little boys here. Now, here's what I want you to do. You keep them right there and take good care of them, and I'll be down to see them the first chance I get. Maybe tonight. Tell them that, will you? Sure, I tell them. And don't you worry, Professor. I take a good care of chump. Mama Lapini, let me speak to him. Sure, your papa, he wants to say something to you. Come on, talk to Papa. Come on, say something. Bye, Emma. Hello, darling. How's my little boy? Have you missed me, huh? Mama. Papa. Who's little Mancy Wancy is you? Oh, go, 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 Professor Thompson, welcome to our family. I'm Mademoiselle Cliché, teacher of the fine arts of poise, grace, and social demeanor. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> uh, I took the liberty of bringing you some flowers, Professor. Wild flowers. Wild flowers? How pretty. Yes, I picked them this morning. Uh, may I arrange them in a vase for you? Would you, please? <laughs> yes, I'd be delighted. <laughs> I don't think there's anything like wildflowers to brighten the room. <laughs> oh, I just adore the language of flowers. Don't you, Professor? Uh, oh, indeed, yes. And sometime we must sit down and have a long talk with them. Oh, <laughs> I hope so. Uh, oh, I almost forgot. What can I be thinking of? Madame Granville requests that you join her on the campus to meet some of the students. All of us girls have been so looking forward to seeing you, Professor. I hope no one will be disappointed. I'm not. ladies, I have summoned you here to welcome a new member of our large, happy family. I take great pleasure in presenting to you Professor Gilbert Jordan Thompson, who will take Professor Dwight Cumming Lang's place. Not with me, he won't. Would you say he was? I don't know. Does he look like an owl? I've seen better heads on umbrellas. Maybe it's Granville's idea of a joke. Well, it's funny to me. Very good. I need not tell you girls that I expect you to give Professor Thompson every cooperation. Thank you, Madam Granville. <coughs> Girl? Dismissed. Yeah. Professor? Miss Farewell, Mademoiselle Portier, Miss Higgins, Professor Thompson. How You'll meet the rest of the faculty at dinner. How many men teachers are on the staff? You are the only man here. So you see, Professor, we're all depending on you. How do you like 
play Master Timber. But I don't no. believe it. I can't believe it. Grendel couldn't be that mad at us. I think we have to look at him for the rest of the semester. Oh, I could stand even that, no. but I've got a hunch he's going to give us a lot of work. He's the mental type. Well, personally, I like my mental type a little more physical. It's a downright shame to let Professor Lyon go. He was such a sugar pie. He never made us study. He was so understanding, just like a real southern gentleman. Well, hot or cold, we're stuck with this one. Yeah. Oh, no, we're not. Girls, I've got it. In a few days, Gilly will be nothing but a horrible memory. Whatever do you mean? Tomorrow morning, when he walks into that classroom, we're going to start a new civil war. And you're going to be Miss Stonewall Jackson. Oh, how wonderful. <laughs> Me? Oh, what'll I do? Come on, girls, gather around, and I'll give you all a rough yeah, idea. Yeah, a rough yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah. Girls! Girls! He's coming across the campus now. Take your places quietly, for goodness sake. Yeah, I just want to Here he comes. Here he comes. Wow, girls. And be dignified. Good morning, Good morning, Professor. Good morning, girls. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Good morning, dear teacher. Good morning to you. Thank you, girls. That was fine. I liked it. Good, Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Good morning, dear teacher. Good morning to you. All right, girls. That's enough of good morning. Now let's get on to something else. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to you. Good stop afternoon, it. dear stop teacher. Stop it. Now stop the singing. Of course, I don't want to discourage you, girls. I appreciate the fact that you all have pretty voices, but then. This period, we're to study ancient history. Now, please sit down. You may sit down now. Students must remain standing in the presence of a faculty member who is standing. You may sit down if I say so. Not without Madame Granville's permission. I think you're mistaken. I'm sure that rule doesn't apply to classrooms. Oh, yes, sir, it does. I'll prove it. We'll put it to a vote. All the girls who think it does say, hip to many a sick to many a zumba. This is a democratic country. Down with all kinds of ism. Yes. Yeah. I have the solution. <clears throat> I'll sit down. <laughs> Today we will study the ancient Greeks. And like them, we will spend our time and energy in the pursuit of knowledge. However, I intend to outline a system of study which will make your work comparatively simple. <laughs> in fact, I'll make it as easy for you to take history as it was for, uh, well, for Grant to take Richmond. I beg your pardon, Professor. Yes? Grant didn't take Richmond. We permitted him to enter. I see. True Southern hospitality. I suppose you think the North won the war. Well, there is a popular impression to that effect. Well, sir, it's not popular where I come from, sir. We'll discuss Lee and Richmond next year. At the moment, we're all interested in Leonidas and Thermopylae. That's what he thinks. Looking at Greece today, you would never think that it was once the greatest nation in the world. More than that, it was the undisputed master of Europe. Uh, as I say, Greece was once the undisputed master. Let us take a look at the map of Europe. The Greece of Homer, Pythagoras, and Euclid. that you had such a good time in class today. I know you won't mind working a little harder tonight. I want you to write a 2,000 word theme on the history of ancient Greece. Oh. My typewriter's broken. Write it in longhand. I get writer's cramp. I thought Lincoln freed the slaves. Yes. Yes. Quiet, please. 
You will hand the steam in tomorrow morning. Oh. oh. Are you going to do it? No. Well, what are you going to do? We've got to get rid of him. Yes, but how? That's the question. If we... No. No, that wouldn't be any good either. I can't think of any plan to get rid of that nasty old Yankee. I certainly wish we had Professor Lang back. Lang? An inspiration. Girls, have you all got paper and pencil? Yes. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. What for? Love letters. Beautiful love letters. That Gilly will never receive. <laughs> Oh! Madeline! Madeline! Lightning has struck twice in the same place. What are you talking about? The girls! I found these love letters to Professor Thompson scattered all over the campus. Thompson? Yes. Read them. My dear, sweet Gilly. Oh. I think of you all night long. Oh. When will I ever be able to look into your eyes and hear you say, I love you? Oh, oh, and that's the mildest of them all. You should read the rest. I can't believe it. Why, the only reason I discharged Professor Lang was because all the girls fell in love with him. You're not going to discharge Professor Thompson, are you? I'll reserve my decision until after I speak to him. Oh. Professor Thompson, kindly come down to my office immediately. Cynthia, I don't know what to think. I could almost understand the girl's attraction for Professor Lang, but with Thompson, I'm completely baffled. Why, well, he has nothing. Maybe he has a charm we know nothing about. I doubt it. However, he'll be here in a minute, and we'll make an investigation. Oh, boy. There he is. Now, I don't want him to suspect we know anything until we get to the bottom of this. And above all, let's be calm. I'm calm, almost. Come in. Good afternoon, Madame Granville, Mademoiselle Cliché. Stop right where you are. Professor Thompson, we wish you to aid us in a little experiment we are conducting. Why, certainly. Turn around. Turn around? That's what I said, turn around. No, 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 slowly. Slowly. Keep on turning around. That's enough. Take off your coat. My coat? That's what I said, your coat. Flex your muscles. My muscles? Now hold that position. Don't move, face forward. Reactions. May I help him? 
make a mental note of everything he does. Now then, sit down. Cynthia, you sit over there. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, it, it was my reflex. Quiet, please. Turn around and don't look at me. I want you just to listen to me. This may surprise you, Gilly, but I am desperately in love with you. You are the most adorable man I have ever known. Your voice thrills me, and I'm sure I would swoon at the touch of your lips. I am longing to have your strong, strong arms about me, crushing, crushing me to you. You are my love, my life, my all. Now, what do you think of that? Well, it's very flattering, of course. But do you think we're suited to each other? Who? I, I, I mean, you and, and, and I. Well, what's that got to do with it? I don't know, but I, I just thought, oh, Madam Granville, please, may I leave now? I'm, I'm not feeling very well. All right, then, you may go. Thanks. But hold yourself in readiness. I may call upon you later. I see. You mean tonight? It's possible. Oh. Cynthia, do you think the professor is, uh, as they say, all there? Oh, definitely. What do you suppose he meant by our being suited to each other? Could he have been making advances to me? Well, I shouldn't be surprised. I've heard there are certain men who go for anything. No doubt about it. I... What? Oh, Professore! Professore! Oh, Professore! Quiet, please. What? Mama Lapini, I told you never to come here. If the school knew I had a baby, I'd lose my job. Now go back home, and if anyone catches you with chum, be sure and say he belongs to you. That is your baby, understand? You bet I tell him. You go lose your job. Oh, that's fine. Goodbye, chum. I'll see you on my first day off. Now be a good boy, huh? Wait a minute. You got to take the baby. But I can't. You got to. One of my kids got the mumps or something. The mumps? Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. His cheeks puff out like he's blowing a coronet. Well, he's got no coronet. That's why I'm afraid to keep a chump in the house. He's liable to catch him. His things are in the basket. Yes. And as soon as my kid gets better, I'll take him back. Yes. Uh, goodbye. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, chump. Mm -hmm. Mama Lapini, wait a minute. You... You've got to be quiet. What is it? I don't know what it is. I made three moves on a camera. Gosh, I don't know what I'd do if you ever got sick and I wasn't there to take care of you. You know, mumps are pretty serious. You know that, don't you? Why, if anything ever happened to you, I'd just have to give up teaching school. Come to think of it, I wouldn't be able to teach anyway if Madame Grandel found you here. You don't know her, but it's just as well. That's why you've got to be quiet. Just as quiet as a little mouse. Now, girls, I've written your instructions on these slips of paper. They all look alike, so take your pick. I just can't understand it. I'd have had a whole year's allowance those letters would have gotten Gilly fired. The letters didn't work because love on paper doesn't mean a thing. So what? So what? So we'll have to make our love-making practical. <gasps> oh, I just can't do this. Now, don't start feet. Here, I'll trade with you. Has everybody got one? Oh, no. Give me mine back. At least it's out in the open. Doris, there's a light in Gilly's room, so he must be there. Swell. Have we got everything? All we need is Gilly and music and moonlight. <laughs> And then we'll get started. Now, first one, I wish we...
chum. Would you please read to yourself? I've got some work to do. Say, what's the idea? Oh, you want some attention. Well, I'll be through correcting these examination papers in a few minutes, and then I'll join you. Quiet, please. Come, for goodness sake, someone will hear you. Quiet. Now, I want to show you something. Look, nothing up my sleeve. Watch closely. See that? Right out of the air. Brand new deck of playing cards. Now, take a card, any card at all. Don't tell me. Oh, 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 I'm not that good. Only take one. Put it back and remember what it was. Now, let's see. Was it the uh, Ace of Hearts? Oh, it wasn't. Maybe it was the Four of Spades. Pretty good, huh? I knew you'd like it. <laughs> now, Chum, be quiet like a good little boy, will you? I've got to get back to the examination papers. You mustn't cry. Shh. Someone will hear you. Look. What will Dodo think? See? He's looking at you. <laughs> well, what is it? Oh, you can tell me the card that Chum is thinking of? All right. Here's a deck of cards. Now concentrate, Chum, while Dodo finds your card. Look around. Concentrate, chum. Is it the Jack of Hearts? <laughs> it is, huh? <laughs> now watch this one. There. What do you think of that? Isn't Dodo wonderful? And look, still more cards. You know Dodo can keep this up forever. Now, who in the world can that be? Chum, shh, quiet, please. <laughs> quiet, chum. And you, too. Professor Thompson speaking. Professor Thompson, this is Eleanor. Yes, Eleanor. I just must talk to you. It's about something terribly personal. Huh? Uh, suppose we talk it over before class tomorrow. Well, if it's that important... What? In the summer house? Yes, right away. <laughs> One of the girls has something she wants to talk over with me. Come on, chum. I'll put you to bed, huh? You know, I told the girls to feel free to bring their problems to me. Of course, I didn't expect their problems to come up in the middle of the night. But anyway, I'm very happy to help them whenever I can. Yes, you bet. They're nice girls. Now, chum, I want you to stay in here, and I'm gonna bring little Dodo to keep you company. Now. You must be quiet, both of you. No noise now. And I'll be right back. Huh? Now, oh, here. Play a little rummy. <laughs> and no cheating, Dodo. Are you sure you all know your places and know what to do? Yes. yes sure. All right, then. Break it up. Ellen, now listen. Just make sure Cliché sees you. She'll be passing by here any minute now on her way to her room. Oh, here he comes. Good luck. Ah, sure enough, need it. Oh. oh, Professor Thompson. It's downright sweet of you to do this. Well, that's one of the privileges of being a teacher. Thank you, sir. Now... Tell me just what's troubling you. Well, I don't quite know how to say what I've got to say. No, no. Suppose you forget who I am and talk to me as if I were one of your roommates. Thank you. You see, Professor, I... Well, I'm in love. Well, that's understandable. Love is a beautiful thing that comes to everyone, sometime or other. He's so wonderful. I'm sure he is. He's the most fascinating man I ever did meet. Professor, he's got everything. Tall, dark, and awfully good looking. And he has the most soulful eyes I ever looked into. And I just can't think of anything else but him. And when he smiles at me, well, I just melt. Oh, Professor, do you think such a glorious creature could ever love poor little me? 
I don't see how he could help it. Oh, Gary! Eleanor, wait a minute. Why, I, I'm old enough to be your father. Oh, Daddy! She's gone to get Granville. Good. Hurry up, Marsha. We'll have to work fast. One, two... What are you doing here? I had to see you. But you shouldn't have come here. What would Madame Granville say? I don't care what she'd say. I don't care what anyone would say. Shh, shh, shh. But I don't... I don't understand. Neither do I. From the first moment I saw you, something started to creep over me. It was wonderful. I can't sleep nights. Can't sleep? Now. Now, do you see? No. Gilly. Gilly. Gilly! Marsha, take it easy. I'm in love. No. I'm in love with you, Gilly! No, wait a minute! Don't you think we should talk this over? No. I do. Oh, please. Please, Gilly, you've got to listen to Marcia, me. Marsha, go home. Oh, Gilly, oh. I'm in love with you. Don't you understand? Yeah. Surely you must take a see card. it. Five of hearts. Shouldn't have told me. Gilly, please. I'm in love with you. Can't be. Can't be. I wonder what's keeping Granville in cliche. shape. I hope Marcia can hold out. Well, I hope Gilly can hold out. Gilly. Marcia, stop following me. But I love you. Control yourself, please. Oh. Are you through? No, oh, Gilly! Oh, oh, oh. Darn it, quick! Cliche and Granville are coming. Fine. They'll be just in time to catch me in his bedroom. What for? My goodness! I'm going to be a fitting climax to Gilly's career. Keep them singing. Okay, I will. Louder! Oh, come on out. I'm not going to hurt you. No, Gilly! You lied to me! No, I didn't away, lie Marcia. to you! Gilly, you're not Marcia, I'll have to report please, you. You don't understand what you're doing. Oh, Gilly, Get no. Get away, Marcia. Quiet. No. Just a minute. No, no. Let me tell you no, how no, much no, I'm No, 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 no. Oh, Gilly. Thompson. Oh, Professor! Professor! Go away. Go away. What? Well, then, take a card. What is the meaning of this? Oh, Madam Granville. I, uh, I, I, I don't know. 
What are all those girls doing here? I don't know. Really, I, I don't know. You don't know. Look at your face. Professor, there's no use trying to protect anyone. Every girl in your class is in love with you, and I know it. Madam Granville, how can anyone fall in love with me? Professor, ordinarily I would dispense with the services of anyone who so flagrantly broke our rules. However, I believe your error was unintentional, and so I will place you on probation. Whether or not you continue to remain here will depend on your future conduct and discipline. Oh, thank you, Madam Granville. After this, not even you can tempt me. Bad boy. The landlady said you called. Have you found my baby? Not yet. But I don't think it'll be long now. We've discovered that a man named Gilbert Thompson has your child. Is he safe? Is he all right? I'm sure he is. You see, Thompson is a friend of Judge Williams. The judge is out of town right now, but as soon as he gets back, we'll find out where Thompson lives. When will the judge get back? In just a few days. I hope so. I don't think I can stand waiting much longer. No, don't you worry. I'm sure you'll hear from us in a few days. Well, chum, I'm certainly glad that you're awake so that I can talk to you. I haven't slept a wink all night worrying about those girls. Can you imagine they... Well, they think they're in love with me. Of course, that's perfectly ridiculous. They may be fond of me, but you know as well as I do, that isn't love. Only they're so young, they don't know the difference. And I don't quite know how to explain it to them without hurting their feelings. Mm. Well, anyway, you sit here and play with Dodo while I go and warm your milk, huh? I don't want to rush you, chum, but you'll have to drink this in a hurry or I'll be late for class. I wish I knew what to tell those girls. Look out! Here he comes! Dora's quick! Oh, hurry, Marshal! Girls, there's something I have to say to you. It's going to be a little difficult, and I... I guess the best way to do it is to tell you about something that happened to me when I was in school. You see, I fell in love with my teacher. Her name was Miss Haynes. And it wasn't until after I graduated that I realized I had mistaken friendship for love. Of course, I was very young, and so it was perfectly natural for me not to know the difference, though it all seemed pretty serious at the time. Of course, if anyone had just taken the trouble to explain the truth to me, it would have saved a great deal of embarrassment. was very cruel. I don't know how you found out about the baby, but you needn't have made fun of him. I'm sorry to say he isn't mine. Nobody wanted him. And when I found him, I... I just didn't have the heart to turn him over to an orphanage. But you wouldn't understand that. I haven't had him very long, but he means more to me than anything else in this world, including this job. Before I leave, there's one thing I want to know. Why did you go to so much trouble to make me feel you like me? Was it a joke? Were you just making a fool of me? Answer me! I could never have believed it of you. Well, you'll be glad to know I'm going to Madame Granville now 
and resign. But I'll tell her about the baby myself, because I don't want her to know that any one of her girls could ever stoop so low as to take advantage of a baby just to get me fired. Chum, we're leaving. But don't worry. Everything's going to be all right. Please don't go. We didn't mean to hurt you. We're terribly sorry about the way we acted. We promised never to do it again. Won't you please stay? Let us take care of the baby. We'll never have a loon soul, and we'll do everything we can to help you. Oh, please stay, Professor. You will stay. Won't you please? had much time to go out and buy him anything. Well, you don't have to worry from now on. No, sir. We'll start knitting him things right away, won't yeah. we, Jim? Yeah. To melt? Besides, it's almost nine o'clock. But we're safe. It's Granville and Cliché's night off, and they never get back until ten o'clock. Yes, but what would happen if they got back a little bit earlier? Well, we have that all figured out. Sometimes our plans are a little complicated, but very effective. Our sentries are all over the place. Janet's our captain, and if anything goes wrong, she'll signal us. Yes, I hope so. <laughs> Here we go, Joe. Oh, oh, I'm 
going to have a baby all of my own someday, and when I do, I'm not going to do anything my mother did. Except get married, of course. Well, now, <laughs> but I mean anything else. I'm going to have a scientific baby. Well, I'm going to have at least five, scientific or not. Now, wait a minute, girls. You know, motherhood is not a government project, at least not in this country. <laughs> <laughs> However, a baby of your own is a happiness I can wish all of you. That's so sweet oh, of you. Wouldn't it be wonderful? Do you suppose it could ever come true? Girls, come here, please. What is this? Janet, signal. Come on, girls, let's go. Good night, children. Good night, Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Bertha. Take care of yourself. Good night. For goodness sakes, what happened to you? Look at your face. Don't worry, Chum. I'll take the rouge off. But first, we got to put the nighty on. Here we go. Now, what's the matter? Greville and Cliché. I don't understand it. They've gone into their office. And with all the other teachers, too. I wonder what's happened. How are you going to get out of here? We can't now. We'll just have to stay until later. <laughs> oh, Charlie. Oh, Charlie. Oh, My girl sewing baby clothes. Incredible, simply incredible. To think such a thing could happen. Maybe we shouldn't have taken the day off. Ladies, I appreciate your bringing this matter to my attention. I need not stress upon you the importance of keeping this scandalous secret. You will please go about your duties as if almost nothing had happened. Good night, Madam Grant. Madeline, do you think the girls could have realized they were breaking a rule? Our rules have been established through long years of experience. But we haven't a single one to cover a situation like this. Oh, dear me, what shall we do? We'd better add another rule. I've got it. Those mash notes. Now everything is clear to me. Come, Cynthia, we'll interview Professor Thompson. But, but he's sure to be in bed. We'll interview him anyway. Oh, boy! Now be real quiet, girls, so we'll go to sleep. I wish to speak to you. I can't come to the door right now. I insist upon coming in immediately. Open the door. No, what is the meaning of this? Professor Thompson, I... Oh! 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 Bertha! Nader! What is the meaning of this? There isn't any meaning. I mean, there is a meaning. I wouldn't know the meaning. The meaning of the... the... I'm not here to lecture you. Undoubtedly, your actions were motivated by the best of intentions. However, Professor Thompson has flagrantly violated the rules of this school, and consequently, he is no longer with us. What? Oh, oh that's terrible. What about 
Silence. You'll please remain in your classroom until I can temporarily assign another teacher to you. You can't do that to us, you old battle ass! <laughs> as mean as that, yet. Can you imagine her letting poor dear Professor Thompson go? Well, what are we going to do without our baby? What's Gilly going to do without a job? He can't take care of Chum. Well, if you ask me, Granville's overrunning Hoss Harvey. Oh, yes. Wait a minute. Yes. I've got it, kids. Something that'll slow Granville down to a walk. What is it? <laughs> Mutiny. Mutiny? <laughs> exactly. We'll lock ourselves in the dormitory, and we won't come out until Granville gives Gilly back his job. <laughs> Oh, I can't do that. But, but you must do something. Professor Thompson, girls, here he is. Oh, Professor, we have to stay here. Stay here. Stay here. Professor, we want you to stay with us forever. I'm sorry, but I have to go. Oh, oh. Professor, if you do go, we'll do something awful. We'll start a fire. Oh, no, no. No, you mustn't. You mustn't. We'll count to five, and then we'll start the fire. Come on, girls. One, two. Wait, Professor, they've barricaded the doors. There's a ladder, Professor, over yonder. Please hold the baby. I'll see what I can do. Go back to your classrooms. You. Did you girls do this? Uh -huh. Well, that's incredible. Now, you must put these things back where they belong. Well, we can't do that. It's too much trouble. No, it isn't. I'll help you, and then we'll talk things over. Come on, like a lot of good little girls. Everybody, uh -oh. pitch in. Okay, come on. Grab, grab on the, that's it, Mom. Grab. Cynthia, where did you get that baby? It's the professor's. I mean, it's not mine. It's the professor's. I know that. 
But how did you get it? I'm just holding it for him while he's up in the dormitory with the girls. What? The girls are having a mutiny. They've barricaded themselves in their room, and they won't come out until you give Professor Thompson back his job. How dare they? Why, that's... that's mutiny. That's what I said. This is the last straw. Oh, what shall I do? You'd better leave it to Professor Thompson. If anyone can handle those... those girls, he can. Well, things have come to a pretty pass. To think such a thing could happen in my school after all these years of established reputation. <sighs> Cynthia, hold that baby's head up. Here, give it to me. Anyone can tell you've never had children. I can dream, can't I? <laughs> you see, even if you forced her to give me back my job, I couldn't honestly accept it. As much as I'll miss all of you, I wouldn't want to stay where I'm not really wanted. But if you go back to your class, I promise that just as soon as I find a job, Chum and I will come and visit you on our days off. classroom. You take care of the baby. Now I'll give them a piece of my mind. Come in. Madam Granville. Oh, my baby. <laughs> no, Dad. darling. Precious, I Dad. thought I'd lost you. Your baby. Is this your baby? Of course he's mine. Here. Let me look at you. Are you all right? Did you miss me? Oh, oh my blessed one. I haven't seen him for so long. Indeed. And your husband, have you seen him? No, not for months. He deserted me. <laughs> so, he deserted you, did he? Will you be good enough to come with me? I'd like my students to meet the mother of the baby. Oh, yes. If you will, please. <laughs> Sit down. Will you come up here, please? Girls, I'm here to prove to you that your confidence, friendship and loyalty, which you so trustingly gave a certain professor, has been entirely misplaced. That's not true! Don't try to defend him. He, he doesn't need any defense. No, 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 no. Silence. This is the baby's mother. And as for his worthless father, I don't... You. You. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. I've thought of you so often. That night on the pier. The coffee shop. What are you talking about? Isn't this man your husband? No, I'm Mrs. Edwards. You see, after my husband deserted us, I had to give up my baby. And I took him. Then you're Gilbert Thompson. Yes. How can I ever repay you? That's all right. He's had the best care in the world. And the love of 40 little mothers. Boy. I don't quite know how to thank you. We're just... just crazy about your baby, Mrs. Edwards. We'll be broken-hearted when you take him away. We don't know how we'll ever get along without you, chum. No. Please bring him back and see us soon. Yes, please. Yes. 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 just leaving. Here are some of his things. Thank you. 
I know he's going to miss you. Not nearly as much as I'll miss him. We've had some good times together, haven't we, chum? And a lot of laughs, too. Remember? <laughs> you know, for a while, I almost thought he was mine. <laughs> well, I have to go now. Goodbye, chum. Be a nice boy. And take good care of your mother. Little curly hair in a high chair. My day begins in 